Assalamu alaikum. Hope all of you are fine. And this is our third lecture of the development of the nervous system. In this lecture, we'll discuss the uh, development of the midbrain from the mesencephalon, the development of the choroid plexus, and how do the cerebral hemispheres they develop from the telencephalon, and then the development of the cerebral cortex, that is the gray matter. As we have discussed, the neural tube cranial to the fourth pair of the somites, they develop into the brain vesicles, that is the forebrain, midbrain, and the hindbrain. And the three flexures, they are formed in the developing embryo, that is the mesencephalic, the pontine, and the cervical flexures. So as we have discussed earlier that the uh, neural tube caudal to the fourth pair of the somites, they develop into the uh, spinal cord and cranial to the fourth pair of the somites develops into the three brain vesicles, the rhombencephalon, mesencephalon, and the prosencephalon. So uh, in this lecture, we'll discuss the uh, brain vesicle, the mesencephalon, which will develop into the midbrain, and the mesencephalon remains as a mesencephalon. It does not change much. And you know that there are three uh, uh, pontine uh, flexures. There are the pontine flexures, the spallic flexures, and the uh, so this is a, a, a brain vesicle, the mesencephalon, which will develop into the midbrain, and these uh, are the four brain vesicles, the two lateral uh, uh, swellings or the vesicles, which are called the telencephalonic vesicles, and they will form the primordia of the cerebral hemispheres, and one median swelling, which is uh, the diencephalon. So we'll discuss first the development of the mesencephalon and then the telencephalon. So the development of the uh, midbrain, which takes place from the mesencephalon, and you can see here the developing uh, neural tube, which is first uh, 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 wide, uh, 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 wide, and it meets the uh, roof plate and the floor plate, and uh, it is lined by the ependymal layer, uh, which is the ependymal zone. Surrounded by it is the mental layer, which is the gray matter. Uh, it forms the neuroblast cells in the mental layer. And as we have discussed earlier, the mental layer divides into the alar plate and the basal plate. The alar plate will form the sensory neuroblast cells and the basal, basal plate will form the uh, motor neuro, neur neurons from the neuroblast cells. Surrounding by the uh, these uh, mental layer is the marginal layer, which will uh, have the nerve fibers of these uh, neuroblast cells, and it will form the white matter. So uh, the neuroblast uh, from the alar plate they will uh, condenses and they will migrate in the tectum portion of the midbrain, and they will uh, collect in aggregates, and they will be separated later on by a transverse fissure and will, they will form a superior and the inferior colliculi, which are related with the uh, visual and the auditory uh, pathways. Now, these uh, colliculi, they will appear in, uh, lie in the tectum portion of the midbrain. Later, the basal plate uh, neuroblast, they will migrate ventrally uh, in the tegmentum part of the midbrain, and they will form the nuclei of the third and the fourth cranial nerves, and also the nuclei of the red uh, nucleus. Um, <clears throat> Later, uh, a band of the gray matter also appears ventrally, which is called the substantia nigra. The substantia nigra appears from the basal plate of the uh, neuroblast cells, but uh, some authorities suggest that the substantia nigra may appear from the alar plate uh, neuroblast cells as they migrate ventrally. And later, uh, this portion is the crust cerebri, which will form the cerebral peduncles. And this is formed from the marginal zone of the uh, marginal zone. And this uh, consists of the uh, descending fibers from the developing cerebral hemispheres and the diencephalon. And later on, they will become prominent as the fibers they uh, descend from the uh, uh, cerebrum and the diencephalon in the, as the corticopontine, the corticonuclear, and the corticobulbar fibers. They will pass through this uh, crust cerebri. Therefore, they are also called as the cerebral peduncles.
<clears throat> so this is another view if we cut a section uh, from this developing uh, forebrain uh, you can see here the section of the mesencephalon the neural tube is wide communication and uh, later on it will uh, uh, squeeze and forms the uh, cerebral aqueduct which is in communication with the third and the fourth ventricle and helps in the flow of the CSF. Now you can see the here the primordia of the colliculi from the alar plate which will form the superior and the inferior colliculi. And the basal plates, they will migrate ventrally to form the uh, third and fourth uh, trochlear nerve, nu uh, third uh, uh, oculomotor and the fourth trochlear nerve nuclei, the red nuclei, and the also the substantia nigra, which may develop from the basal plate or by some by the alar plates. And the development of these crust cerebri. Uh, this is an adult uh, uh, section of the transfer section of the midbrain showing you these uh, cerebral peduncles, the uh, uh, gray, uh, band of the gray matter that is the substantia nigra, the red nucleus, and this is the uh, uh, oculomotor nucleus, the Edinger Westphal nucleus, and uh, this is at the level of the uh, superior colliculus and uh, you can see the uh, cerebral peduncle. So this part uh, where the colliculi, it is called the tectum and these uh, basal plate nuclei, they are present in the tegmentum part of the midbrain and these are the rura cerebri or which will form the cerebral peduncles. The epitabial roof is covered externally by the pia mater. And the vascular membrane together with the ependymal roof forms the tila coritia, the sheet of the pyometer covering the lower part of the fourth ventricle. Uh, due to the active proliferation of the pia, the tila coritia invaginates the fourth ventricle where it differentiates into the choroidal plexus. Uh, infoldings of these choroidal arteries of the pia. And similarly, these plex, uh, type of the plexuses, they are formed in the lateral ventricle and also in the third ventricle walls. The choroid plexus, they will, uh, these choroid plexuses, they will secrete the uh, ventricular fluid, which becomes the CSF. And uh, as additions, they are made to it from the surrounding uh, 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 of the uh, surfaces of the brain, spinal cord, and the pyarachnoid layers of the meninges. And various signaling morphogens are found in the CSF and the choroid plexus that uh, are necessary for the development of the brain. Now you can see here in this diagram the flow of the uh, CSF as it takes place uh, from the, the, these are the developing lateral uh, ventricles in the cerebral hemispheres which we'll discuss later on. And so these uh, choroidal plexuses in the walls of the lateral ventricle, similarly, they will produce the CSF and they will flow uh, in, uh, through these uh, uh, into the third uh, cerebral aqueduct and uh, into the third ventricle into the uh, cavity of the fourth ventricle. Uh, then uh, the choroidal plexuses in the fourth ventricle, they will also secrete the CSF here. And there are uh, three foramina in the roof of the uh, fourth ventricle that is the one median uh, the aperture that is the foramen of Majendi and two lateral uh, apertures the foramen of Lushka. They will help to uh, uh, circulate uh, the flow of the CSF from these uh, openings to the subarachnoid uh, space and uh, they, uh, there they will uh, absorb by the arachnoid granulations into the venous sciences. So this is how the CSF is formed and circulated in the uh, subarachnoid space. Now this diagram showing you a five week uh, old embryo and we have discussed the uh, different vesicles, brain vesicles and the flexures. Now we'll be going to discuss the development of the telencephalon. So this is the 13 week old MDO and the telencephalon or the primordia of the uh, four brain vesicles. They have uh, uh, much uh, grown in a larger size. Later on in the 26 week old embryo, the telencephalonic vesicles or the cerebral hemispheres, they will overgrow the 
uh, hindbrain and the midbrain uh, vesicles and this is uh, the, the development of the brain at the time of the birth. So we'll discuss the development so the telencephalon it consists of uh, which develops from the forebrain vesicle and it has two uh, parts the two lateral diverticula and one median uh, uh, vesicle or the diverticula these uh, lateral uh, diverticula they are the primordia of the cerebral hemispheres whereas the median portion will form the diencephalon and the cavity of the median portion of the telencephalon forms the extreme portion of the third ventricle and the cavity of the telencephalon is the lateral ventricle so by, uh, as the beginning of the fifth week of the development initially the cerebral vesicles uh, are in wide communication with the cavity of the third ventricle through the interventricle foramen or the foramen of the monroe and you can see here the roof of the uh, third uh, the ventricle in which the choroidal plexuses they have been uh, developed and uh, this is in wide communication with the cavity of the third ventricle later on uh, the uh, telencephalonic vesicles or the cerebral hemispheres they uh, grow uh, laterally and uh, expands along with the, as they expands the ependymal roof of the diencephalon it also expands laterally and also superiorly so the the, the portion of the third ventricle which forms the roof of the third ventricle it is thinned out and forms the lamina terminalis and these uh, cerebral hemisphere uh, vesicles, they are in communication with the uh, third ventricle in wide communication through the foramen of the Monroe. And the cavities, they appear in the uh, cerebral hemispheres, they are the uh, lateral ventricles. So the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle, it will form at this side, at the roof of the third ventricle. So uh, if later on, the size of this interventricular foramen it will reduce and the mesenchyme between each uh, the hemispheres they condenses to form the fox cerebri now the gray matter of the cerebral cortex uh, which develops from the pallium the pallium is a roman uh, word which is used for the uh, vestment of the uh, Roman Catholics or the Popes, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the woolen uh, vestment which is used by the Roman Popes uh, and the uh, pallium or the grey matter of the cerebral cortex, it will appear in this uh, pattern. So we'll discuss the uh, development of the corpus triatum, how it appears uh, as uh, the lateral to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the and also the hippocampus. Uh, now, during the sixth week of the development of the uh, cerebral vesicles, there uh, is the uh, a swelling appears in the floor of the each developing cerebral hemisphere, and this uh, swelling uh, becomes close to this interventricular foramen or the foramen of the Munro, and they have a striated appearance, and this bulges in this uh, cavity. In the, this is the uh, corpus striatum. So, this corpus striatum. Uh, which is a part of the gray matter of the cerebral cortex and th this will appear in both uh, cerebral hemispheres. So the corpus triatum will differentiate into the two parts, uh, dorsomedial part, the caudate nucleus and a ventrolateral part that is the lentiform nucleus. This lentiform nucleus will later develops into the lateral part, which is the putamen, and the medial part, the globus pallidus. Now, the ventricles of the later, uh, cerebral hemispheres they have been closed uh, by the uh, close approximation of their medial walls, and uh, the choroid plexuses they appear in their uh, the walls of the lateral and the third ventricles. These are the developing thalamus, which are the uh, parts of the this whole part portion is. 
then uh, so as we have uh, discussed so these medial surfaces of each hemispheres they will approach uh, the slowly and steadily with each other in the midline so that uh, with the uh, uh, closure of the uh, with the approximation of these medial walls this caudate nucleus and this uh, developing thalamus they will come which is a part of the diencephalon uh, it will come in contact with each other close contact with each other the external capsules they will be formed here uh, which consist of the projection fibers that will pass from the lentiform nucleus So then there is a development of the uh, another uh, bundles of the fibers that is the ascending and the descending tracts of the, of the uh, which passes through the internal capsule. So this is the portion through which the uh, ascending and the descending tracts of the developing cerebral hemispheres they will pass and they will separate this corpus striatum or the uh, striatal appearance into the medial and the lateral parts. So as we have discussed that uh, uh, the medial walls, they will come in close approximation with each other. So this portion of the medial walls of the cerebral hemisphere, it will be thickened and it will form the uh, longitudinal thickening of this forebrain vesicle and protrudes into the lateral ventricle. And this, will, this part will form the hippocampus, this part. So uh, the primary function of this hippo hippocampus is the olfaction. So this is the developing, you can see the thalamus and uh, below is the, the developing hypothalamus which are the parts of the diencephalon which we'll discuss la later on. So as the uh, uh, cerebral hemispheres or the telencephalonic vesicles, they will uh, grow and expand rapidly, both laterally, superiorly in all directions so that they overhang the midbrain and the hindbrain and they will form the different uh, lobes. So anteriorly, they will form uh, the frontal lobe. Superiorly, they will form the parietal lobe and uh, posteriorly, they will form the occipital lobe and inferiorly, they will uh, form the temporal lobe, which is not shown in this diagram, which we'll discuss later. So these lobes, they are formed because of the rapid expansion of the cerebral hemispheres in laterally and superiorly. Now you can see in this diagram the how these uh, cerebral uh, hemispheres it will expand and forms the frontal, parietal, occipital lobe, and then it inferiorly it forms this temporal lobe. So because of these expansions of these cerebral hemispheres, the caudate nucleus uh, that we have uh, seen before, uh, which appears in first in the wall, uh, floor of the, uh, the lateral ventricle and the developing uh, cerebral hemispheres. This caudate nucleus, it also becomes C-shaped. So it's a, a pear-shaped head elongated body lie in the floor of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. And its tail makes up a U-shaped turn to gain the roof of the temporal horn. So you can see that how the, uh, the, this uh, caudate nucleus, it uh, forms the head, uh, then it forms the body and the U-shaped tail. And uh, along with its, the whole cavity of the lateral ventricle, it, which is forming its roof, then it's in, uh, the, uh, the tail is formed, uh, the floor uh, uh, is formed by the lateral ventricle, the tail of the quadrate nucleus is, uh, is on its uh, roof. So this uh, horn of the lateral ventricle, it will project into the occipital horn or the occipital lobe. And uh, there's such uh, that the caudal nucleus has becomes the uh, forms the uh, head, body, and the tail because of the elongations of the uh, cerebral hemispheres in the different lobes, and along with that the, uh, cavity of the cerebral hemispheres, the lateral ventricle it also forms in this direction along with its lobes. So uh, cerebral cortex, you can see here, we visualize again the different uh, uh, weeks of the, uh, the developing uh, brain. You can see the 14 week uh, old uh, 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 embryo, 
the uh, week 26 and the week 30 and you can see the progress of the cerebral hemispheres. So initially the surface of the cerebral hemisphere is smooth. And during its the final part of the fetal life, the, uh, the surfaces, they grow rapidly so that the convolutions, uh, which are called the gyri, they appear on the surface. So these are the uh, different gyri. Uh, these gyri, they are separated by the fissures, which are called the sulci. So these sulci and the gyri, that is the elevations, uh, they are and the depressions. So the elevations they are called the gyri and the depressions they are called the sulci. So these sulci and the gyri they increase the surface area of the cortex without requiring an extensive increase in the cranial size. So initially the surface is smooth. Later on these sulci and the gyri that is the elevations and the depressions they appear on its surface to increase the surface area. Now you can see again, uh, these uh, is a smooth surface and then later on the sulci and the gyri, they appear on the surface of the cerebral hemispheres. Uh, another uh, depression uh, appears or a, a growth uh, or uh, appears uh, in the uh, area between the frontal and the temporal lobes. Uh, this area is uh, de deepened and widened along with the lateral sulcus and this area is called the insula. So at birth, almost completely, it is uh, hidden in the depths of the lateral sulcus. Now you can compare the uh, brain of a five month uh, old uh, embryo, the seven months and at the birth that is uh, full of the sulci and the gyri. So how slowly and steadily they appear to increase the surface area. So this is also showing you the surface of the brain in the different weeks of the embryo. This is another uh, diagram showing you the uh, different lobes, the frontal pole, uh, the parietal lobe, uh, lo lobe, and this is the developing lateral sulcus. And this is the in the depth you can visualize the insula portion. And this is the lateral circles, the occipital pole, and uh, these uh, are uh, comparatively smooth as compared to the uh, brain, uh, which is uh, at the ninth peak or at the birth, which is also the sulci and the gyri, they have the blood vessels uh, over their surfaces. So uh, this is uh, the development of the cerebral hemisphere or the telencephalonic vesicles into these adult cerebral hemispheres. So in this lecture we have discussed the development of the mesencephalon and the telencephalon. Uh, in the next lecture we will uh, discuss the development of the diencephalon and, uh, and also the uh, cerebral commissures. Thank you.